if you really like it, just you can make a career path out of it and just go for it and just try to be the best at what you're going to do, like at what you want to do. And I feel like that was something that my mom always, that was her like saying, like, whatever you do, just be the best at doing it. And just if you love doing it, just do it, basically. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Proud to Be LBUSD podcast. Uh, really exciting today. Today on the show, we have Bryce Barbie, who is an LBUSD alum and currently a PhD student at UCSB. Uh, he was a member of the African American Scholar Program at the Aquarium of the Pacific when he was in Long Beach Unified. And today we're going to discuss his experiences in the program, how it's impacted his life, and just, just learn about him as um, somebody who's from our community. So Bryce, how are you? I'm good. Yeah, no, I'm doing great. Thank you guys for having me on. This is real cool to be able to go back and do some stuff for Beach Unified. I'm from Long Beach myself. Yeah. So it's like, it's just real cool to be able to go back in yeah, and talk to you guys. Awesome. Perfect. Thanks for being here. So we're zooming Bryce in. He's up in Santa Barbara. So uh, he uh, stepped out of his busy day to chat with us. So let's get into it. Maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey through Long Beach Unified, and then let's dig into what you're up to now. Cause I know you're up to some really cool stuff. Yeah. Like I said before, I'm from Long Beach. So um, yeah, grew up in Long Beach, went to Went to Longfellow um, and then went right from Longfellow to, to Hughes Middle School. And so, um, yeah, so spent a good amount of time there. And then um, then went to Long Beach Poly for, for high school. And then right after high school, just went um, to UCLA where, well, I guess in high school, that's where I first got, like how you mentioned the aquarium. That's where I first got connected. Well, I guess technically in middle school, that's where I first got connected with doing aquarium stuff where um, I was a part of like the volunteer program for the aquarium, um, which is basically just like getting teenagers involved in um doing just like volunteer work with with different parts of like the aquarium and then um in high school I worked as like an education volunteer um at the aquarium which is a good amount of like just talking to the public and learning like info about the aquarium and then just sharing info about the aquarium to be yeah, to the public and like most of the people at the aquarium are just volunteers who are just um like the people that you see at like Shark Lagoon and stuff like that on the mics and it's just people interested in like marine science. And so I feel like that was like a really cool just experience for me of just like getting involved with um like marine science type of stuff and just talking to like getting out of the comfort zone with just talking to big groups of people about it um, of all ages too, which I feel like was a huge type of thing to get comfortable with. Yeah. And so where, um then yeah, so that was that poly that I was doing some stuff with that as like the education volunteer. Um, ran cross country there. Um, I feel like that was huge in the sense of like just getting me outdoors and like interested in just like outdoors type of things too, which like, I feel like it all kind of connected, connected together, like pretty good. Um, once it just like, once I started trying to figure out like what the things I like, like what types of things I like to do and, um, what kind of career, like I wanted to go on and, um, and yeah, start pushing forward towards. And so then I ended up applying to like different UCs and end up going to UCLA winning kind of like, knowing already that I wanted to really because I just liked looking at animals and just I always had a bunch of animals just like in my room like lizards like mice just different types of animals just in the yeah in my room and stuff and just like I don't know it was just basically always interested in like looking at what they were doing like when they're eating and stuff like that them like messing with each other like different fish like fighting each other and stuff and to where um so like that was like one in high school I remember asking what like my um my AP bio teacher of just like, okay, if I want to do like some stuff with basically just watching the animals and also just being able to like see them in their natural types of habitats, like what do, like what kind of stuff, I know it's biology, but like, what do I look for with that? And so, um, so then end up looking at the natural like environment or whatever animal it is that you're studying, like you collect data and do research there. And so I was like, that sounds basically perfect. So I ended up um, looking into like UCLA, saw that they had like some cool programs with that and applied and got in and then just um yeah went there and like started just getting involved with like animal behavior labs and stuff and that was through the first one like that because I guess kind of going there I didn't realize that like going into a lab was exactly the thing that like a lot of people do when you're trying to just keep on going on that route but um I joined a program or like yeah I was just like selected to be a part of a program called like the Howard Hughes Medical Institute Pathways program which is basically a program just trying to get um just like minorities into STEM research. And so um, that was like really huge because it's just, yeah, it was a, like the main professor and then Dr. Tracy Johnson, like she's just working with you 
a lot to just get you like involved in um just any type of research that's what whatever is like interesting to your your field and stuff and like whatever like yeah whatever is just like specifically for your interest so a lot of people doing like evolution type of stuff and like cell bio type of things but then i wanted to do the behavior and ecology work and so um she got me like connected with the lab with that and so just started working with them after like the summer of my first year i think at ucla and then um kept on going with that and just kept on doing projects until it like i looked up and was like okay i think like doing a grad school type of thing would be something that i would want to do basically to just continue doing the stuff i was doing then which is just working on different types of like projects with animal behavior and um yeah just ended up getting into that and applying yeah applying for um like a, a lab here at ucsb and so that's where i'm at now i'm in like my second my second year of grad school um chipping away at the phd trying to get it done PhD, that's huge, man. That's so cool. That's so awesome to hear. Thank you. I'll take it. So when you're when you're thinking about that, as you're working through that, like obviously you had some like when did you realize like you kind of talked about really getting involved in the aquarium around middle school? And I remember that I I remember in college doing the uh did an internship there and you know did the same thing, the touch tanks, like being, you know, being the speaker and having to like learn the spiel and what to say and stuff. It's so cool. Is that was that your first foray into really kind of being fascinated? I mean, for like as a career, because obviously you talked about, you know, being connected to animals and just being inquisitive and and you know observing. Like, when was the point where you went? Boom! It was it was the time in the aquarium. Or like, when were you like, dude? I want to I want to push this and go further. This is something I'm going to do with my life. I guess. Um. Well, I guess I got to go back even farther with that, where it's just like the first intro to like this could be a plan that I wanted to do was just my parents in the sense of like my parents they're not involved in science um yeah they like they yeah they don't do like science type of like careers at all but they were just always like really strong on just like hey whatever you want to do like whatever is interesting to you just go ahead and do that and just like like if it's interesting to you and you love like doing it and you really like enjoy doing it like make it into like a career basically and figure out like what it is so for me it was like I was always the one just out in like the backyard trying to catch some lizards and putting like flies into the different spider webs and seeing how different spiders like attacked them and stuff like that to where it was like they kind of just like <laughs> pulled some strings on that and was like all right like we're gonna we're gonna really like cultivate this and get it going and to where um yeah I felt like that was so like it kind of always seemed like I knew I could do something with it and I remember doing stuff of just like I used to watch a bunch of like the National like Geographic and Animal Planet things. And I knew like if there's a show where like if we're looking at um, like Planet Earth and like David Attenborough is following like some like group of monkeys or something like that. Like somebody I knew somebody was telling him the facts about like where they're going to be. And like, yeah, the different things of like, oh, man, like this is how, like this is how like they groom each other and just like or this male is aggressive or something. And like, it's, yeah, how like the different groups interact. And so I knew somebody was like telling him the facts for that. And I knew it probably had to just be like some scientists for it. So um, I remember just thinking like, okay, like I want to just be the scientist who like has to like come up and tell him that type, like those types of things. And then just kind of do random like Google searches about it basically. But um, yeah, so I feel like that's where I kind of like, started on that like this has to be possible of being like a research type of path and it was just getting information along the way and like exactly how you said with the aquarium of getting there and seeing it like like okay I can just learn some information about the stuff right here and like I had I used to go like fishing and stuff where like my dad and that side of the family they're all like really into fishing and so like knew a good amount about like some of the just fish I haven't like seen them before too but then just being like, okay, this is actually really cool that you just go in and then like, like that this is a path, like the education um, going and just like, I liked just being on the mic too and just talking to her. It was like, okay, this is cool. Like I can just, yeah, hop on and, and like, even though it made me really nervous, but it was just like, I felt like I could, I could do it into it. It was like, all right, like this is, yeah, this is something that's cool. And so I felt like with that of just, and also just seeing like the different, like the aquarium has like different research teams and stuff too um involved like in different projects and so knowing that it's like yeah there's people who have careers in like these different research projects but still not like fully putting it all together I guess I didn't fully put together just like the like the route of being like a researcher and like the grad school type of aspect that's like needed with it until I got to until I got in undergrad basically and then um 
that I feel like that's once it started, like, is when it started making sense. Once I started just seeing people who had, like, just who had labs. And basically, I was just seeing, like, professors who just had their labs and doing, like, their research. And I was like, okay, well, if I did what you did, then, like, I'd enjoy that as a research, I mean, as a career path. And that's when it's like, all right, I'm just going to start talking to you and seeing, like, what did you have to do to get here and stuff? Yeah. I feel like that was, yeah, that was kind of like the main thing where I knew it was like something in there and like something possible with it. And like just through the different experiences and like, especially, yeah, with like the aquarium too, that like there was something possible there with it, but just trying to figure out exactly like what it's called and like what I need to do in order to, um, yeah, in order to like get to that point, basically, which I'm still trying to figure out yeah, all right? the time. But like, I'm, I'm <laughs> thinking, like, yeah, that's what I can think of on the way. But yeah, it's like, <laughs> That's cool, man. So, so that's, that's so fascinating, right? So having, obviously having parents who are going to like help you spark your curiosity and foster that is wonderful. And obviously even, even before we, you know, kind of hit record and started talking, you know, you obviously proud of being a poly student and being an athlete and you, you know, obviously had some enriching experiences and you seem very driven, obviously, if you're already to the point of PhD. So let's dig a little into go further with the aquarium. So Tell me a little bit how you became involved with the African American Scholar Program at the Aquarium, and like what motivated you to get in it. Obviously, you had some interest, but tell me kind of how that birthed. What what's that whole process? Yeah, so um, I guess so. My first beginning, like with the Aquarium, was how I was in in middle school, and that was with the Volunteer Program. I don't remember who told me about that, or if that was just like it. It could have been something where I just went to the Aquarium one weekend and saw that there were people like volunteering, doing like who looked about my age. And I was like, okay, like, what are you guys doing with it? And, um, or it could have just been like, a, like somebody who knew our family told us about it. I don't remember exactly how that started, but I remember applying for it and then just getting an email back saying, yeah, come like to the Aquarium and like the training for it. And so that was the volunteer program. And then after that, like, the year that I did that was done. I went into it just being like an education volunteer for it. And so that's when, yeah, I'm just wearing like the normal uniform and I'm out there just doing, um, just like, yeah, on Shark Lagoon with the mic and stuff. And so I was about like 15, maybe around then, like 14 or 15, I think. And then, um, so did like, yeah, did like a good amount of time just with them. And, that. and then, um, then I got reconnected with the aquarium last year yeah last year so like the first year of just my phd and um and that was through so like i already had those connections with it but then it was like another program that i had done at ucla that was a marine science um like program basically that um yeah that there was like a cohort of students in there and so that one's called the diversity project and it's run by some professors like paul barber and peggy fong out of ucla and so um with them it was paul barber who like knew about this aquarium program and ended up um, sending us emails and was like, Hey, like, I think it'd be a great program. Like for you guys, like you should apply. It seems like a really cool one. And so this was for the African-American scholars program with the aquarium. And so, yeah, he just told me about that and then went ahead and like applied. And it was cool just being able to go back like to the aquarium and just like, Oh yeah. Like I know the aquarium of the Pacific. Well, wow. and so it was, yeah, really cool. Just being able to like go back to the aquarium and, um, just start like, yeah, talking to them again with different like opportunities like this. And so that's how that one started. And then like with that too, yeah, there's other, there's other people who like went from the diversity project, the one that I was in at UCLA and also um, ended up being like, they ran just different cohorts. So they were also like alum, alumni of the, um, of the Aquarium African American Scholars Program. And so it just like knew some of them. And then, um, which was cool, like, a lot of them, like, I didn't know that they were in it until I had just gotten already into, like, the aquarium program. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I already kind of have a connection, yeah, with, like, some of you in there. And so that's pretty much where, like, yeah, how, like, I got connected with that specific, like, program for it. Nice. You're already, you're already in so deep, right? So connected with that, with the, that community and that, and that organization. So I was, you know, kind of digging into the whole process of that, of, of that scholarship. And it was, you know, talking about the financial support, obviously, but then really even talking about giving you further opportunities to explore uh, career options in the field. So how did that impact you? Like with, I mean, with your academic pursuits, your personal growth, where you're going, um, what was the impact of being in that specific uh, African-American scholarship program? Yeah, no, that was, that was a really cool one where it's like, so 
I guess by the point that I joined, so there's there's people who are in it, um, like our cohort ranges from like undergrads, I want to say might be in their like third year of their undergrad into like some PhD students who are in like their fourth or like fifth years of their PhD. And we might even have like one who, oh no, I don't think in our cohort, like anybody's done with their PhD yet. So it's like kind of like people who are in not like a huge like range of career, like or like career stages, but like enough where it's a time where you're trying to figure out like different things that you're going to do like career wise. And so like the cool part with mine, I feel like was I went in, like because I went in in the first year of my PhD, I already had like the idea of wanting to do like research stuff. So I kind of knew like where the, like the career path like of it was going to go, even though I'm still, still figuring that out all the time. But um, to where like, then I could really, like the program could really like help me out with trying to figure out like what resources they have for like knowing different research. So yeah, it's like types of opportunities I can get involved with too. And so um, like a huge one with that and just with research in general and like all of like marine science type of thing is just how connected it all is. And I feel like that's not something that I just like, that's something that I didn't fully realize until like you get into it, how like, the whole field knows each other basically and to where just building these connections is just like really important and with that it's even like building connections of just the early scientists coming into it now which is basically what the aquarium um or like the african-american scholar program is it's like a lot of early career scientists that are just doing different types of marine research and we kind of already just like now just have our different connections where it's like i know people from like the shark lab at cal state long beach that are doing different things that i just think are cool too and it's just starting to like build those, yeah, just build those connections, which I feel like it, that in itself is just like a really like huge plus from the from the program. And then um, the aquarium, how I say like the aquarium is, is like involved in so much research too, to where just figuring out like one thing that the aquarium did for us was um, had like a panel of people who are in like different careers involved with the aquarium too. And, um, and it was cool just seeing like the different research teams that they had where it's like they're doing um captive breeding programs of like frogs that are endangered in some areas and to where just seeing like okay like that's just a cool route that it's like i'm not always um that i'm just not always like open to here and just like learn like i don't learn about like a good amount of that stuff here like in the university because it's like we learn a lot about just like the academia route of it so it's cool just seeing like the different routes that um just are involved like with that too and then um they have like a team that does stuff with like giant sea bass like population work too and so just seeing like oh like that's really cool and like i had a project here that i was working on with like some giant sea bass stuff and so just getting connected like with those people where it really is just like a lot of just building those connections which is yeah just a huge part of all of this stuff even how i say with like the going back where volunteer stuff would just see like the community outreach part of it and then seeing how like that's a whole field of like jobs too that people are involved in but um it kind of just like opening just like different paths of thinking about those types of career options that it's like oh okay like i never never really thought about it because it's really easy just to get involved like in your one path here doing like the academia research stuff and not realize that it's like there's a bunch of different a bunch of different routes that you can go um with research and so i feel like that was like that was one of like the biggest like yeah, pluses from like being in this program of like career wise, I feel like. That's so cool. It seems like that. I mean, obviously the theme of networking you're talking about is the big piece, but even it seems like your world kind of expanded. I mean, you're already, you know, were successful yeah. and driven as a student. You were curious, you had the support of your family, but then this seems like kind of just like opened up doors for just, there's so many pieces out there. And I always think about that. I used to teach high school. I think about like, you know, we always, as a kids, we always look at careers as like, there's a fireman, there's a policeman, there's a doctor, there's yeah. a scientist and not realizing like, especially in your field. I mean, you're right. You're studying so many things. And I, I love that you talked about giant sea bass are so cool. I love the giant black sea bass. Yeah, like they're yeah. such an amazing, I swam with one in, in off a of PV one time when I was in college and it just, it scared me at first. Cause it looked like a Volkswagen yeah. car coming at me, but they're so <laughs> exactly. cool. That's, that's awesome. So when you think yeah. about the program, so you talked a lot about networking, um, Tell me a little bit more about that. Like, what were some of the relationships you built? Or like, what was something that's memorable? What was like that, that like, what were some specific, like maybe a story or an anecdote or something that happened that really kind of just, that sits with you, that resonates with you? Yeah. Um, I guess like, like, I don't even know if I have one that sits 
above like them all but i feel like there's just a good amount of like different times that it's like you just meet different people that are doing just cool different yeah like just cool research and um or just in different positions that i was saying that i feel like just add up like really well where it's like oh man like today i end up talking to like this person that just yeah how i say like i or the aquarium they end up putting me on the phone with somebody one time where i just reached out really quick and was like hey like i'm doing this giant sea bass project was wondering if I could just talk to somebody in the team over there, just see like what types of things are you guys working on over there? Like really broad kind of just to, just to see. And, um, and it just made that happen so fast, you know, where it was like, Oh yeah, like we have people here. You can talk to them on Thursday, you know, let's just hop on a call and end up just having like a really cool conversation about the different things that they're trying to do there. And, and to where I feel like it's stuff like that, that just ends up adding up kind of just a bunch of like those experiences, I feel like. And, um, yeah, just people like in our cohort for the African American scholars, but then also in just like other cohorts um, that might like that we meet with all the time to where I feel like it's even hard trying to figure out who's in our cohort versus who's like an alumni from like a different cohort because we're just so like mixed up together too. To where it'll be um, people like from a different one that are doing jobs at like the California Department of Fish and Wildlife or like a job with like NOAA, like or the nature conservancy or something. And so it's like just meeting different people and like starting to like learn their career paths and like their routes too. And I feel like, especially for me in like the career stage that I'm in, like it's really how, like I was saying before, like it's starting to become a like pretty important thing for me to start figuring out like what are all of the different just career options that I have. And to where um, with that, like it's cool, just like it's, often that it's just like well i didn't know like that that was a <laughs> that that was a job that you can do but that actually sounds really cool you know you're just working on some like green sea turtle like tagging thing to like monitor their populations and stuff and it's like didn't know that that was a thing you know and um or like knew that it was a thing kind of like an idea but didn't know that like didn't know the actual route of like who does that you know and to where just being able to see like yeah this is the person that does that <laughs> and just like yeah getting connected with those people and so um yeah, I feel like, I, yeah, that's basically, I feel like it's just a bunch of interactions like that that end up adding up. And like one, a really cool one that they connected me with was um with the California Department of like Fish and Wildlife. I just like recently did a panel type of like presentation thing for their Black History Month, um like celebration thing. And it was just cool just being able to like, it was, and then like another student who was doing like his own type of research. And then, like, a professor who was older and had, I think he was retired and had um, been doing, like, a completely different type of research for a while. And just us talking and, like, yeah, just talking for a while of just, like, yeah, he's a good amount older and just telling us how, like, his career path and stuff went. And even though it was, like, in a not completely different field, but, like, it was a, a different field from what, like, I'm in right now, too. Of just seeing, like, how that went and stuff to where, like, that was just, yeah. Like things like that is really cool. I feel like that the aquarium just connects me with. So when you, that's great. When you, you, you kind of already answered my, my next question, but I want to kind of tease out a little bit further. So I know when you yeah. look at a lot of the implementation of this program and kind of the, the design of it, a lot of it talks about with the aquarium is really expressing that, that desire for continued connections for alumni. And it sounds like you have, it sounds like you, you made a lot of connections in that and were able to be exposed to a lot of different aspects of, of research and, and different career options. Um, is there anything more about like that continued process? Obviously you've gone back and you've supported talking about being on a panel and these different things, but I mean, is there more about that? Like how great is that to have this? Like, it seems like you have this network that has continued to evolve and grow even now that you're done with the program. Yeah. Yeah, no. And like, it's great even for me just to have the network of, especially like, other PhD students or other like master students that are just in like a similar stage to me, but then I'm just kind of having it at all different levels too. And having people who have finished their PhDs and are like already doing different type of like government jobs or like industry jobs or have stayed in academia and are doing um, like research related, like with that. But then also like, it is a cool position and I enjoy being in the position of also being like the older mentor for some people too, who are just like, in undergrad and also like even though being an undergrad for me that's that's like only like two years ago right right now where because like yeah i went straight from undergrad just into the grad school stuff so it's like it's basically only two years ago but it's just a like it's a two year like 
it's one of those things where it's like two years ago, I knew like a lot less info about like this whole process than I do now. And it's like every year it's like you just, or each time you have to just do a different thing related to like grad school or just like the research process in general, you just learn so much. And it's like, like there's not in, you would think like in schools, there'd be just like a, like in universities, there's just be like a, an easier, just like central type of like, like plan or like way that they just tell you about all of these different things as far as like grad school and, and just like research careers and stuff like that. But there's really not. And so it kind of seems like, like everybody has to go on this individual hunt to figure out the information. It's not like they just give you a two unit course where they just tell you about like, oh, here's everything you need to know about the plan. And so it's cool just being in like a program like this where it's like, I can also be, I can also sit and like learn from people on the panel about different things, but then I can also be on panel and like tell you just stuff that I've just picked up along the way that a lot of times it'll be like, oh yeah, like you just forget that people don't know it because it's like, it's been so in your face, like for the last, just however long, like the last year where it's like, oh, this actually is how grad school just works. And like what, even just telling in general, like what my daily life looks like in grad school, that it's like, there's not a program or a class that just fully teaches that to you in, um, in like the university when it's time for you to start making those important decisions. So I feel like that's like, that's also a cool part is like, I get to be part of both sides. And so I do feel like really lucky for that, that I get like equally, I can just talk to undergrads or even like younger, talk to high school students or middle school students, which that was a cool one that the aquarium um, helped me like get involved with was I did like a Skype a scholar program with just Hughes middle school. So my old middle schooler where um, I just talked to their science class and just kind of like made a PowerPoint presentation about what my daily life looks like and how like what I'm doing as a grad student, like a marine scientist too. And to where um, just doing things like that, uh, like people with people just in different stages. I feel like it's a really cool thing that the aquarium has just like allowed me to do and just like helped me connect easy and have like a platform to do that type of stuff. And that's like the pinnacle of that, right? Of that talking about those connections, because I, I like how you put that. You're almost like at a, at a stage where you're the bridge, you know, you're, you're still learning, you're growing, you're yeah. networking with people who, you know, are seasoned veterans in the field or other people who are graduated, but how cool to be able to go back and kind of say, you know, to these young kids, like I've been you, I've been in your seat, I've been in your shoes and this is what's possible. Like what an impact that can be. So yeah. when you think about that and you think about this program being sp specifically for African-American students. Let's talk a little about representation. Like, what's representation like in your field? What has that been like? Like, you feel like there's a lot of people that that you feel connected to from from a cult cultural standpoint, from an ethnicity, from representation. Let's expand a little bit on that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, so as a black student in marine research, like, there's not that much representation from from like the black community just in marine research. And to where, um, yeah, that's definitely been something that it's like having to just like get comfortable with kind of and just like like also learn how to just yeah like do the different parts of it and stuff and not yeah see many people that just like look like me in the in the field too and to where um I do feel like the representation part as far as like even just kind of getting that sense that like hey this is possible you know like for a lot of people they're like yeah there's a lot of people that's just like oh man like you've never seen like a black scuba diver before. And it's just like, you didn't even kind of put yourself in the, like in the game kind of of thinking like, oh, that this is possible and something that I can do. And to where, uh, I feel like that part really cool to me. It's like, and I thought about that when I did hop on the Zoom call for, um, or doing like the Skype a Scholar program, like with the, with the middle school students where it was like, okay, I'm just showing pictures of them, like of me scuba diving. And it's not like I'm necessarily like, thing like oh i'm a black scuba diver but it's really cool that it's like oh they get to just see that it's like hey this is just somebody that also it's like looks like me and he just threw on a scuba tank and some fins and got in the water and <laughs> got it done yeah so there's you know yeah. obviously you said there's not a lot of representation of african-americans in these fields so for you to kind of pioneer that in a lot of ways and be exposed to that and have the support from the aquarium and then of course others but then giving that back to like going back to middle schoolers like how cool for them to see you in that position and say yeah, this is possible. Yeah. This is what's out there. And, and I, I think about that all the time with like career exploration. Um, I used to do a lot of work with the pathways in, uh, in high schools. And 
Um, it's very simplistic and narrow minded, not realizing how many amazing jobs there are, are and careers are out there. We don't, it's so hard to expose kids to that. It seems like you had such a rich opportunity to be exposed to that. And now you're giving that back, um, to kids, you know, in your own community. Yeah. Yeah. No, I do. Yeah. I do love that feeling of it. It was like, I feel like it won't even like kind of how I said it, it doesn't even just kind of like it doesn't even have to be that hard of something that like I do where it's talking to them about like my research. It's not like I have to go into a very like super, super detailed research talk about it. You know, it's kind of just showing like hey, this is just what I do on the day to day. And I feel like even just having like the presence of me just showing you like what I'm doing is is like a huge plus for a lot of the students of just saying like that this is something that's possible. Yeah. That's really cool. So what are you up to now? You're in the middle of your PhD. What, what's, yeah. what's, 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 what are you working on? Yeah, right now I do. So I do like behavioral ecology work. So like a lot of my questions are centered just like mainly around behavior of animals. And um, so I work with cleaner shrimp. And so they're like, they're shrimp that clean, we call them like their client um, species on reefs. And so like the shrimp will just be set up at cleaning stations, which are basically the anemones that they live at. And so they're there in groups. And then these fish come in to the cleaning stations, and it'll be a bunch of different species of fish that come in and receive a cleaning service where the shrimp hops on and does things um, like pick off the ectoparasites and the dead skin from the fish. And so I do a good amount with like the behaviors involved in that. And so like some of the things that I look at are the signaling um, behaviors that they do different species of shrimp will do different type of signals um, to their clients. And so it's like an interspecies communication type of thing where it's like the shrimp will, some of them will like clap their kiwi, which are like their arms. Um, some do like an antennae flicking type of behavior. And yeah, it's basically just a signal to the clients. We think that the idea is that they're trying to convey the information of, hey, I'm a cleaner. I'm here to give you a service. And, um, and then the clients will do like a color changing behavior oftentimes too, where they come in and change from like a light to a dark morph of a color. And um, we think it's like a reciprocal signal back to the cleaner of like, hey, I'm here to actually receive that service. And so um, one of the things I was just like really interested in coming into grad school is a lot of the fish that these shrimp clean are, they're considered like predatory clients and that they eat crustaceans. And so it's like, they basically it's like you're hopping on and cleaning a predator and a lot of times like they'll hop into like the mouths of the fish and start picking out um just like the parasites or just the dead skin and so there's definitely like a risk involved for those shrimp with that and so i became pretty interested in how like different shrimp just mediate that risk either through signals or just like how some shrimp might be so like one of the most recent things i got involved in is like looking at in a sense it's called just like like the personalities of the shrimp and how different shrimp might have different like personalities in the sense of like some might be bolder than others when interacting with these clients in the sense of like, do you actually interact with them? Some choose not to interact with them. Um, how long do you interact with them? Or are you the shrimp that hops in the mouth and starts doing the cleaning? And um, so, yeah, that's been one of like the main things I've been working on where I'm looking at the actual individual behaviors of the individuals in the groups and seeing like how that might affect their whole groups. Like, quality of service basically in the sense of how long do you clean a fish that comes in do you actually accept the fish as a client coming in and we look at those of like service quality metrics basically that's, and um so starting to see like yeah if they're connected that's <laughs> so, wild yeah, so that's what i do can you imagine <laughs> yeah. you know 15 year old bryce just getting involved in the aquarium that now you are like becoming an expert on the behavior of death defying yeah. shrimp <laughs> It's cool. Yeah, no, it is. It is like a really cool one where I do have to like step back and kind of like give myself my props every once in a while. Like, okay, I, I kind of did it, you know, like I'm getting it done. Yeah. And to where, um, yeah, it's good. Especially I feel like one of the main parts that I like is I started talking about this earlier, but how I like just like the field work part of it where you can actually go out um, to where the shrimp are, just any animal like is and um, and study their behavior in their natural environment too. And so um, I'm just like, I do a lot of that with diving. And because it's like the shrimp, I got so lucky that the shrimp are only in coral, like tropical areas. And so like my field work has to be in coral tropical areas. And so I just go and like do a lot of diving where I place down the cameras. And because the shrimp stay at their cleaning stations, it's really easy to place a camera 
in one spot and like be able to record a lot of these interactions because it just happens at one spot where you know it's going to be at this known spot and um so i just go down place like a lot of cameras wait for the cameras to collect like two hours worth of footage and then pick them up change the batteries out put them back out and um and then that just gives me like a lot of footage that i can then take back to the lab and start turning in the data of like which species did they clean did they do like this behavior during the interaction how long did they clean this individual for and so it's like i'm doing some stuff with that where i'm like tagging each individual now in a group to be able to start like looking at this individual specifically behaved like this during the interaction versus this individual and starting to see like the differences with that. Yeah. So, so that's my, that's my day to day. That's cool. I thought you were, uh, you know, off the channel islands with that cold water. That's cool to hear you're, uh, you're getting to dive <laughs> in the warm water, right? In the tropics. Um, yeah. so, no, exactly. so as we kind of close out, what's something you would, what's advice or something you would tell, like when you, when you think of talking to students, you've, you know, have had these opportunities to talk to kids at your middle school and stuff. What's something we can kind of leave the community with that you want to share? I guess I might have to go with just like kind of, I guess, yeah, to wrap it up of just how my parents viewed it, which was just like, hey, find what's interesting to you. It might not be science. It might be something else. Like my sister, for her, it was art and English and like writing. And so she now works as like a script writer for cartoons and stuff. And that was like always something that she was just interested in. She's constantly just drawing cartoons. But um, find just like what you're interested in. And like, if you really like it, just you can make a career path out of it and just go for it and just try to be the best at what you're going to do, like at what you want to do. And I feel like that was something that my mom always, that was her like saying, like, whatever you do, just be the best at doing it. And just if you love doing it, just do it basically. And so like that, and then I guess we're like more like tangible type of thing to leave it on. I feel like a huge one, that I had to figure out and like, I don't know if somebody just told me or if in general, I just ended up figuring out was like, during like, use your summers a lot to like, to actually go just do some of those things where it's like, okay, so during my summer, I was going to like the aquarium. And it's like, I wasn't doing it. I was also chilling a lot during summer and just going and like having a good time. But also be like, okay, like, one day a week, I'd go like, or two days a week, I'd go do like, like a couple hours at the aquarium where I'm just, but because it's something I actually like doing, it's not something that seems like a super, like, like a burden to me. Like I, I get to just do this also too. So like, just find something that you like to do. Like I remember my sister, she used to go to like some local store and like teach like some art classes or do like something with that. Where, um, and I feel like with that, it just starts building up, like not to get too in detail about it, but like it starts building up just like your resume and just like your, like, your experiences that you can then talk about on like college applications and stuff like that too. And it just starts, you can start figuring out like what you actually like and what you actually don't like. Like there's certain projects I've done before where afterwards I was like, Oh, that was cool that I got to do it. But like, I'm, I'm cool on that research. Like I don't need to do that type of stuff. Like it just wasn't interesting enough to me and to where, um, I feel like with that, yeah, just find like the things that you just like to do. And like, that is like, that's easy to say, but that is hard sometimes to just know of like, oh, this is what I like to do. Let me do it. But I feel like with that, it's just a lot of times just trying things and the information, like learning that you don't like to do it is like equally as valuable. I feel like as learning that you like to do it. And so um, just trying things and like, if you like it, then you like it. Cool. Keep on doing it. If you don't, maybe take what parts of it you did like it and like you did like about it and like keep on doing those. Or if you didn't like the whole thing, just like, all right, you, you can check that one off now that it's like, you know, that that's not something that I'm interested in. And, um, and I feel like, yeah, if you just start doing stuff like that, like it'll slowly start to shape like the ideas of like, this is something that I enjoy doing. And um, yeah, so fill your summers, <laughs> fill your summers with stuff, but also leave some time to chill. But like, yeah, but, like use your summers where it's like, all right, this summer I did this experience. Next summer I did like, and the summer before that I did like this experience. And then by the time you get to where you really got to start making those like college decisions and stuff like that, like, all right, let me go back and look at my experiences and start seeing like what was interesting to me. And I have stuff that I can talk about now for applications and like just talking to people about, yeah, about the stuff. And so I feel like that's my, that's my advice. Awesome. Wait, well, hey, thank you so much for spending the time with us today and just letting us get a little window into your life and all the awesome stuff you're doing and your experience in the program. And thank you for what you're doing to just give back and be a leader uh, for a community. So I appreciate hey. talking to you today. Yeah, no, thank you so much too for just, inviting me and let me yeah let me do this it's real cool just to be able to come back and like talk to people in long beach and long beach like unified school district and so yeah thank you a bunch for it i appreciate it mm -hmm.